Hi guys, it's Joshua Stern with Keller Williams Real Estate. Today's blog is about buyers winning in a multiple offer scenario. So my goal with these blogs is to keep you educated about all things real estate. So you have the ability to make good decisions, great decisions, in fact, when it comes to home buying or your home selling goals. So sometimes home buyers wonder if it's even worth trying to compete against other buyers in a seller's market. When there is very little inventory on the market, it's not unusual for a seller to receive upwards of 20 offers and only one buyer can win. It's almost always going to be a good idea for you to write an offer anyway. And here are some tips to make your purchase offer outshine the rest. Number one, submit a large earnest money deposit. Pending home sales sometimes blow up. Many sellers are worried that once they commit to an offer, the winning buyers might back out of the transaction or default on the contract after all the other buyers have disappeared. The earnest money deposit is part of your down payment. By increasing it above normal limits, you're actually showing the seller that you're serious about closing. You're only offering the seller more money a little sooner than later, but it speaks volume. Number two. Show the sellers you are qualified. I like to call this the golden ticket. Almost every multiple offer will be accompanied by a lender letter. To stand out, ask your lender for a loan approval letter or provide a full desktop approval, which is different than just being pre-qualified. Being pre-approved is the golden ticket in the eyes of the seller. It actually turns you into a cash buyer. By the way, do this before you go home shopping. Okay, Do it before you go out and fall in love. You're going to want this. Number three, give the sellers time to move. Buyer's possession is often a sticking point. It's hard enough to juggle multiple closings if you are selling and buying simultaneous, and even more difficult if the sellers are doing the same. So cut the sellers a little bit of slack and give them a couple, two, three days to move out after closing, and don't expect any compensation for that. It just helps you. So by federal law, you have 10 days for inspections due to lead-based paint, unless you waive that right in writing. Always get a home inspection, by the way. Always get a home inspection, but tighten the time period. If your loan is solid, waive the loan approval contingency. Talk to your agent about comparable sales to decide if you want to waive an appraisal contingency. Consider waiving the appraisal contingency as well. In the event you have an appraisal issue, you can still cover the difference between the appraised value and the purchase price in cash at closing. And this is one of my favorites, write a letter to the seller. Moving can be as an emotional experience to a seller as it is to a buyer. So if you provide a letter to the seller using the seller's na by name, this can actually be uh, you know, available to you in the county records if you need it. It lets the sellers know how much you love the home and what they've done with the home and how you plan on carrying on the tradition of taking care of and making this house your own home. Let them know who you are and, and how you think you'll be an asset to their neighbors. Write your best offer up front. Don't hope for negotiation, okay? This market is not up for negotiation. Offer your highest price right out of the gate. Make it attractive, maybe a bit above list price, or consider using an ex escalation clause that offers some amount of money above the next highest offer in a multiple offer scenario. Ask your agent for a comparative market analysis to determine pricing. Sometimes sellers deliberately set a price below comparable sales in an effort to generate multiple offers. So paying a little extra doesn't mean you're going to actually overpay or, or pay above market value. And market value is actually moving up quite quickly anyway. What you may have thought was a high price might actually be market value by the time you get to the settlement table. So last week I had a home that had 13 offers on it and I was surprised that not a single one included an escalation clause. Finally, think about a backup offer. So if at first you don't win, try and try again. Or statistically, just realize that about 24% of all offers that are accepted between a home buyer and a home seller are going to fail. If the listing agent doesn't accept your offer, then write an addendum to the offer using the secondary backup clause. Um, also, our Wasatch Front MLS system includes backup statuses, which means our realtors have access to a full database of sellers who are actively looking for a backup contract. And agents with skills matter. If you're not using a buyer specialist as an agent, your, your likelihood of winning is greatly diminished. We have over 30 different strategies for winning with buyers in a seller's market. Either talk to your agent or we would love to have an opportunity to apply for the job as your buyer specialist. Hey, feel free to call, email, text us, and you're going to be amazed at how fast we get back to you. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video blog.